All right, I think it's I think we're good to get started now. I think everybody is on for the most part. So thank you all for joining. Um, welcome. Uh, again, my name is Kathy Welch. I'm the recruitment specialist for Onondaga Pathways to Careers. And today we have Nancy Carr, our director of our Office of Accessibility Resources and OPC joining us. And we'll be lucky to have her um, presenting to you on disability and self-disclosure. We also have Laura Mokriski, who is our career services coordinator. We have Jay Harrison, who is our um, assistant director for OAR. And we have Celestia Orazda, who is our uh, liaison for SU for, uh, with us. So thank you again for coming um, and for um, joining us for our past sessions. This is our last session of the semester. For those of you who've missed any sessions, our first session was on online learning strategies and had some good questions and answers. Our second session was on career preparedness. And our last session that we did was on college planning. And those can all be found on our website if you did miss any of those um, sessions. I'll have great information. So um, today we're going to get started with a video I'm going to share. It's a video done for our Office of Accessibility Resources. And then I will be handing it over to Nancy Carr. But before all of that, for any of those who are going to be watching the video, I should also say that OPC is part of a grant, a five-year demonstration grant through ODEP, the Office of Disability Employment Policy through the Department of Labor. And um, this is our fifth plus year in the grant. So this um, will be our last semester of OPC. But there are many great resources on OCC's campus that we want to share with you all. And we hope you benefit from um, learning all this information. So I'll get started and I will go ahead and share the video unless you have any questions. If you do have any questions throughout the session, go ahead, please enter them into the chat. We'll do our best to answer them. And of course, at the end, we'll keep them open for any questions you might have. All right, so bear with me, I'm gonna share. All right, everybody, here we go. This is our Office of Accessibility Resources tour. It could be found on our webpage. Hi friends, my name is Mariana. And I'm Gina, and we're gonna show you how OCC supports individuals with disabilities today. Follow us. Let's go. One of the most visible ways our campus is accessible is through our campus signage. We have signage for handicapped parking, doorways, and restrooms. We also have signs that show routes on campus that are not accessible. If you're looking to avoid bad weather, we have ADA accessible here? indoor walkways that connect Gordon, Academic 2, yeah, and Toronto Hall together, them. and a bridge that connects Coulter and Mulaney Hall. Now let's get into the office tours. Career Services. Da -da -da. So Career Services is a great resource that we have on campus. They'll help students with job navigation, resume building, and help with cover letters. All of the services here in this office are accessible to students with disabilities. Hi everyone, I'm here with Sean. He's the Director of ResLife and he's going to tell us what kind of services ResLife offers students with disabilities. Hi everyone, um, as the Director of Residence Life, I oversee all of our residence homes and work directly with the Office of Accessibility Resources to ensure that any residents and students who may need accommodation, um, we can meet those needs. So from bed shakers, uh, strobe lights, uh, service animals, uh, the widening of doorways, uh, modification to bathroom faucets uh, or you know, bathroom handles, door handles, light switches, 
Um, we ensure that all students who are interested Hello, in living on campus, um, that we make their living environment suitable for his or her needs. Uh, Jerry, I just want to Hello everyone, you. I am here with Jerry Farnett. He is the case manager for the Community Care Hub. Uh, Jerry, I just wanted to ask you what services do you, um, does the Community Care Hub offer for students with disabilities on campus? The Community Care Hub comprises all its services to the individual needs of a student. So whatever a student's circumstance or needs are, it will be met in the Care Hub. Whether that's through the services of the food pantry, which are for students that are experiencing food insecurity, whether that's a transportation need, we will customize a program for students so they get their bus passes that they might need for transportation to campus. We will also interact with other departments on campus if that needs to be accomplished. Good example would be, I would help a student interact with financial aid if that were part of the process of getting funding for if they want to buy a bus pass for the whole semester. Um, or students are eligible for all counseling services, like all students, including um, daily living counseling, mental health counseling, just coming in and wanting to have a chat. Um, we have well-trained awesome. counselors, Jerry, thank you so much. licensed, so available to help everyone. Awesome, Jerry. Thank you so much. That was so helpful. All right, friends. So I'm here with Kathy in the Learning Center, and she's going to tell us a little bit about the services that the Learning Center offers for students with disabilities. For students with disabilities, for those of you who are registered with the Office of Accessibility Resources, if you provide us with your accommodation forms, then we can offer you extended time for appointments. An alternate location, awesome. different Thank you software, so much. and different computers that will help you do your work. Today. Awesome. Thank you so much. Friends, thanks for coming on the tour with us today. If you have any more questions, please go ahead and click on the link in our description. Thanks. All right, without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Nancy Carr. And Nancy, when you're ready for me to start sharing my screen, just let me know. All right, I'm ready. Okay, you got it. I hope everyone can hear me. Thanks for bearing with us and joining us on this cold, wintry day. Here we are. So hopefully in the chat, you'll ask any questions if I use any terminology you're unfamiliar with, or even if you have some helpful comments of your own, please feel free to join in. So I call this the family guide for students with disabilities. Are you ready? And what it means is now's the time to start talking together as a family about your plans. I think it's even more important than ever now because of the COVID situation and uh, the need for really considering what's right for you. So first step, of course, is right here. Talk about it together. And there's a lot of hype associated with the college choice and decision. So try not to fall into that because I found from other families that usually only causes unnecessary stress. And don't think you have to fit into a single way of going to college or a mold um, just because your brother did or your cousin or your best friend. You have to make the journey the appropriate one for you. That could mean going part-time. That could mean auditing a class. It could mean taking classes for credit, but slowly in your own speed while you're working part-time or it could be something that they do more in Europe than we have done in the past here in the US, a gap year. Maybe you're not sure what you wanna do yet, or you wanna try working first, or as I say, you wanna combine going to college part-time and working. So again, it's about figuring out what's right for you. Next slide, please. So in exploring college now, and this uh, presentation has some references to OCC, but in general, it's for any college exploration process. So be talking with your family and your guidance counselors. Have you decided yet what you think you might study? Hopefully what you will study will be connected to a future career. Not everyone's determined that yet. 
So are you decided or undecided? Do you want to explore more career exploration first? Types of college, a little later on, we'll get into all the different types of colleges there are. Uh, so many here in New York State, we're very fortunate. Where will the college be that you will attend? Are you going to stay home, be a commuter student? Are you going to live on campus? Some people like to start out living at home and then move to campus a year later. Nothing wrong with that. Again, COVID has put some different um, scenarios to some of these decisions as well that we need to consider. And then your budget. That's really important to talk about with your family. And will you need to work while you're in college or will you not be employed? Next screen, please. So OCC is one of many community colleges. We're a part of the SUNY system, the State University of New York. So community colleges have several options. One is to take a two-year program that leads straight to employment. We have some really wonderful options available at OCC. One that I can think of right off the bat is our very well-known culinary program, our auto technology program. So you would attend for two years and then you would go right out into the workforce. Uh, that's attractive to many people right now. I certainly understand that. But you can also enter a transfer program at a community college. A transfer program means you would attend two years here, graduate, then go on to a four-year or university institution to obtain your bachelor's degree. And we have many articulation agreements with four-year colleges. And of course, our own SUNY system enables many students to do that. Affordability is a key factor as a benefit of a community college. You will not find any more affordable options than a SUNY two-year college. So some students do what I call cost average. For example, we have an articulation agreement with SU. You can attend OCC for two years, transfer to SU. Your degree will say Syracuse University but you will have spent two years less worth of tuition dollars while attending OCC. Try and narrow down your options to three to five schools. I work with some families and they're like, I'm, we're gonna apply to 10 to 12 schools. Wow, that's a lot to juggle. And each school may have its own admission requirements. So if you're gonna do 10 to 12 schools, you're also gonna need almost a spreadsheet of what materials you need to submit some may have deadlines, some may not. Um, to me, that's just uh, more stress. Again, if you can narrow it down to three to five, going to make your experience more enjoyable. Next slide, please. So gathering your background materials for the actual application. Again, what is each college asking for? are you going to need letters of recommendation? For some schools or even some specific programs, you will. Do you need to write an essay? Have you started that? Can you work with, again, your guidance counselor, uh, child study team, a tutor, however you wanna try and get that essay together. For all institutions, especially right now, you're gonna need your immunization record so trying to gather that and have that a hand. Sort of key to our office and important to us, any records of your disability from high school, a 504 plan, your IEP, psych eval, a doctor's report if you think that's important or necessary. Make sure you keep key copies of these records at home in a special folder that you will always have on hand High schools only keep these records for so long and they may be really important again later on if you're gonna transfer or apply to other colleges as well down the road. You're gonna need your final high school transcript. And then this is an important thing to sort of talk about with your family and again, your guidance counselor at high school. Are you gonna disclose your disability or not? 
um, you do not have to at the beginning. So you have to decide if there's any reason to do so or you want to hold that information for later. Next slide, please. So this is pretty difficult right now. Uh, we would recommend that you could physically visit your favorites if you could. Right now, again, that's pretty tricky. So I know OCC is having a lot of virtual events like this. Visit the college's website, try and navigate, find out information that you can on those college websites. Maybe later on in the spring, hopefully things will improve. Maybe then you can take an actual physical campus tour. It's always so much better if you can actually see the campus itself. And if you actually are able to do that, try and visit the Disability Services Office. If not, you can always call them, email them, engage like with Teams or Zoom like we are today. Uh, try and find out how robust those services are at each institution. Again, if you can physically visit, try and actually talk to some students there. Do they like it? What's the average class size? What are some pros and cons about the campus? The campus culture. This year, we're all sort of struggling with this. Um, we had such a wonderful athletic program. You know, some things are on hold right now. Again, hopefully by next fall, when you become college students or the year after, if the vaccine's out, it's going to open things back up to our more typical college experience. Next screen, please. So the sort of college service checklist, as I call it. If you're going to a fairly large campus, is there transportation around campus? Uh, not all of our students here at OCC have cars. We're a pretty big campus, so we've had a campus shuttle bus. Uh, is that something that you're interested in? Or you know, are you a hiker and you just wanna walk around campus? Parking access, if you are gonna be parking and bringing a vehicle on campus, where do you park? Is there good signage, directions, adequate parking spaces? How far from the main campus are they, et cetera? Computers, I think we've all had to worry a little bit less about that right now because of COVID. I think pretty much everybody I know right now has been forced to sort of upgrade, improve, and have available technology right now. We've already mentioned events. The size of the campus, again, if we're going back to a more typical campus experience, that matters a lot. Residence halls, again, if you're going to live on campus, what are the options offered? Singles, doubles, suites? Do you need any form of an accommodation for the residence halls? We'll get to that in a little bit. Health services, pretty important right now. Are they offered? Is counseling offered? Where are those services located? Uh, our offices services, accessibility services, tutoring. If you use a lot of uh, in-class or uh, other types of academic support services, those shift when you attend college. So does the college offer tutoring? Next slide, please. This is really key. I think other presenters have sort of already touched on this, so I won't spend a lot of time on it, but you the student becomes pretty much the decision maker. All of us in our various roles on campus, we deal with you the student. Um, right now it's pretty hard because a lot of parents and families have been worried, understandably in our current COVID environment, um, they often try and call and interact with us the parents can always provide us with information, but this FERPA rule goes into effect. FERPA is a federal ruling that actually covers all college campuses. So what it means is we have to focus on the student. We have to communicate to the student. We do have a release form that a student can sign that allows us a little ability to talk with the family, but it's certainly not the same as high school. Along that same line, the child study team that ends in high school. So any services that you've had in the past that have just been automatically set up for you, that does not happen either. So this gives you a lot more freedom, but you have to take that freedom 
seriously. So what we recommend is you establish a file with our office by sending us your documentation and then we'll interact with you as you choose. We cannot make you use services. We can certainly highly recommend them. We can explain them to you so you understand how to use them, but we can't force you to use them. And all of these are various components of the Americans with Disabilities Act, abbreviated as the ADA, because the laws that governed you in high school now change. Next screen, please. So along with that, will services be the same? Well, that depends, probably not all. We offer, in general, services that are accommodations, not modifications. So there are few, if any, waivers. We cannot change the course content. Extended assignments are sort of rarely done. All classes are mainstreamed. Most students like that, uh, that I've interacted with at least. As you already know, I don't think I have to stress the next bullet. It's a whole new world for all of us here today. More emphasis on technology, Zoom, Teams, transcripts, chat features. Um, yes, <laughs> we've all had to learn to use new technology and we're still learning that. Tutoring can replace resource room support. We're offering virtual tutoring. So we'll get to that in a minute. Testing right now, you can have a lot of testing services. A lot of our testing right now is online as well due to COVID and other campus restrictions. Next slide, please. And considering your applications and how many and what colleges you're going to apply to, Two-year public colleges in New York State are open admission as long as you have graduated from high school and received your degree. That takes a lot of pressure off, right? Don't have to go through any of the other hoops associated with more competitive colleges. Have you taken the SATs? Do you need to? Again, if you checked with colleges and you don't need to, again, that's another pressure off. Many colleges have not continued college placement tests due to COVID. That's something important to check on as well. At OCC right now, we are not doing college placement tests. If you're not taking math your senior year and you think you know what you wanna study, you sort of need to review that in readiness for your discussion and with an advisor as to how you would be placed into college math. We do recommend, of course, that you keep using your testing accommodations. We've done studies over time and found that the majority of students that use those services do better uh, than those that don't. Next screen. Oh, sorry. It's all right. Financial aid, pretty important right now. Please start early. New York State has its own form of financial assistance called TAP. Many people don't know that there's an additional form of TAP for students with disabilities. It's called ADA TAP. And that award is made to students who because of their disability uh, attend college part-time. Apply early, this is really important this year. There's two state agencies. One is called Access VR and then there's the New York State Commission for the Blind. If you uh, have a visual impairment, try and connect to those agencies really early on because um, I don't think they're all back in their offices and there can be some waiting time. By all means, explore scholarships and be very careful about debt. That's why if you can get access VR to support what financial aid might not cover, maybe you can put off uh, having to take out a loan for some time. That's always as advisable if you can. You're meeting with the Disability Services Office. Again, right now, uh, we're doing our meetings virtually. Uh, our students went home at Thanksgiving time. We missed them already. Uh, so we have to use Zoom and Teams. We're sort of accustomed to that right now. Um, so 
whether your meetings in person here on campus or with your parents, will you do your meeting alone or include your parents? Try and speak for yourself though. You will be expected to know what your disability is and how it affects you. We'll probably be asking you questions about that. Um, we're not trying to be nosy or pry into your private life. Uh, we're just trying to get to know you so we can set up a good service plan for you or make some recommendations as we speak with you. Again, residence hall accommodations, uh, those are part of our responsibilities as well, not just academic services. Drug and alcohol policies are pretty important to explore. Some colleges are way more strict than others. Food allergies, medications, emergencies, those are issues we always explore with students as well. Right now, there's more students worried than ever before, uh, our whole society, not just students. So do you want the support of a counselor? That's not a bad thing, that's a good thing. Um, and it can keep us going, keep us motivated, keep us on task to do as best we can. AIDS, readers, those are all issues to explore and talk to us about. Attend orientation of the school you've chosen. We did have an orientation this year. It was online, but we did have one. We certainly hope them to happen in person in the spring, but that's unpredictable at this point in time. Next, please. These are just recommendations once you've decided uh, if you're going to be living on campus or even just studying on campus, a nice graduation gift is a nice set of noise canceling headphones. Uh, we hear that in the residence hall, students can be up at all hours just because you feel like quiet at that point in time uh, might not mean that your suite mates do. Find a quiet spot on campus that you like. There's so many beautiful spots here at OCC, especially when the weather's good many outside spots, but indoor spots too. Build study time into your schedule. Again, that's gonna be more important for you to do independently. So if you wanna ask your OR or academic advisor sort of how to set that up initially, we're glad to have that discussion with you. Hopefully you can visit your professors during their office hours. If not in person, you can do that online. Again, are you gonna use note-taking services, tutoring services? You can set up a study buddy system. There's all different systems of support. And of course, use a planning device of some type. For most students I know right now, it's either their Chromebook or their phone, but it is important to take notes and remind yourself of due dates. We all need to do that. So this one makes me feel a little bit sad because it reminds me of our prior life. Um, college isn't just about work. It's also about being in a club, meeting new people, especially those outside of maybe your local locale. Try something different. It's you know a new chance, a new opportunity. Ask questions. If you have a problem, we're all here to try and help you be as successful as you can. Don't sit on that problem, sort of reach out and let us offer you assistance. Um, right now, I doubt you'll feel being homesick, you might be sick of home. <laughs> that might be the reverse right now and you might be dying to get outside of your home and out into the real world again. And I think we can all relate to that right now. Next, please. So more independence, we've been stressing that, will be expected. Sleep deprivation is an issue. Uh, I think it's even gotten worse in our whole society again with our stress levels right now. But some students report gaming activity until even two or three in the morning. If that's your average, obviously please do not select a schedule that includes 8 a.m. classes because you won't be getting enough sleep then. Um, it's another benefit of college. You can have a schedule that starts much later in the day and even goes into the evening. So be realistic about your life and what you like to do. If something is going wrong again, let us know. Don't take on too much, especially that first semester. Uh, we recommend an average of 12 credits here for your first semester, which is considered full-time. And find out the withdrawal policy. 
right now with COVID, again, that's been more important because we're in different types of classes that students may be a little less familiar with. Um, I think there may be some parents on the call. So uh, this college process is just as much an experience for parents. So be supportive, but try not to hover. If you're anxious about all this, try not to pass that anxiety onto your son or daughter, because that won't help either of you. Please don't perform tasks for the student that they should be doing for themselves. And that goes for the application process. And once they begin college, have a backup plan. If you've set your heart on a very competitive school and you're not sure if you're gonna get in, you're gonna need that backup plan just in case the student doesn't get accepted. The parents gonna go through a transition too throughout all this. Come, could be some happiness, could be some sadness, could be some concern. So within that, try not to compare to other siblings, family members, friends, et cetera. None of us are perfect. Um, a book I really recommend a lot to parents, you can get it on Amazon very easily very inexpensively is called Letting Go, A Parent's Guide to the College Years, which talks more about recommendations for you, the parent. Next, please. Again, um, we're all feeling more anxious right now and it comes and goes in different ways. Um, I know this past weekend, I heard from several of my students that they now have COVID or their family members have COVID and they're in quarantine. So we have to be realistic about what's really going on and to try and support each other through this time period. Um, try not to worry ahead. Again, there's not a lot we can control right now. So we have to try and stay healthy, try and stay positive and focused, but not borrow trouble that we don't need to borrow. Again, student, use your support system. That may be your parents, but Try not to agitate or make each other more anxious. Um, chunk each of these steps out. If you chunk it out and approach it step by step, uh, it's going to seem less overwhelming. And again, don't compare yourself to others. It's probably not going to be helpful. You can always find somebody better off than you are. And how is that really going to help you? So this is all really an experience about learning a lot more about yourself, about you and your family. Parents, it's starting to let go and realize that your son or daughter is going to be a young adult now. Give yourself a big pat on the back. You're an important reason they've reached this stage because of you. We're not saying that a parent's role is reduced because we don't like to interact with families. It's more that our focus has to be on the student, we have really two to three years to prepare your son or daughter to transfer to a four-year college or enter employment. So that's going to require them to mature, become more independent and move forward into the adult world. So you're gonna be asking yourself some of these questions. Do I wanna attend this college or do my parents want me to attend this college? Or if I'm just not sure, Am I gonna be full-time or part-time? There's nothing wrong with being a part-time college student. Are you a morning person? Do you better study later in the day or attend class later in the day? And what services do I think I'm gonna need? You're gonna mature and change. You're gonna take charge. You're gonna role play. This can all be very exciting as well and give you a great sense of satisfaction as you move forward. So I always say normalize, and I don't often really like that term normal because I really think there is no such thing, but I hear a lot of students, especially right now, because we're all a little bit more isolated. I'm the only one that this is happening to. Uh, not likely, especially right now, we're all sort of in this situation together. So that means it is more important to ask for help and use that help so we can get through this phase successfully and hopefully resume a more typical life than that we enjoyed before. So change happens over time. 
with a good support team. Who is your support team? Who's that gonna be? At a college, there's some predictable times of stress. Uh, we're headed towards one right now. Usually the beginning, the midterm, when sort of it sets in that, you know, I might be a little behind in chemistry class and I better start applying myself and catch up or use some extra support services in the period of time that we're headed into right now, which is our final exam period. So be aware of that. Um, we have a whole nother presentation that we give new college students on healthy stress relief and really give yourself a big pat on the pack. Appreciate yourself for every step that you've succeeded in. Don't give up. This can seem daunting, but in the end, if you keep chunking it out and keep doing those little resources one at a time, um, you're going to arrive where you want to. So this is just some contact information here. I think Kathy's gonna be sharing with you um, a lot of contacts in that link for the little video that hopefully at least provides you a visual about uh, our campus here that we're proud of and we'll hope we can welcome you back to physically at some point in the future. So questions. Any questions? You can type in the chat or you can unmute yourself. Yes, if anything comes up after the fact, I will send an email link to everybody who was on the call today um, with the, the website to watch the video and with all the contact information. Absolutely, especially if um, you're interested in coming to the campus um, for an individual tour um, you can contact me about that and I will include my contact information as well um, in that link or in that email for you. Our office is in the Coulter Library, which uh, is a beautiful facility. So we hope you can visit it. Yes, maybe not being in a large group, but individually mm -hmm. in a small group, we, we are able to um, work with that right now with COVID. So how many of you, I'll ask you some questions if you don't have any questions for me. So how many of you have an idea of where you think you might be applying so far? Anybody thought that far ahead? Julie says she has. Pierce says OCC, yay, but not sure which program yet. Um, so let's put out another great resource that we have here. Um, Laura from our Career Services Office. Um, as Kathy has said, it's a key partner of ours. Um, and Laura and her counterpart, Amy Stewart, can assist you with um, sort of exploring different career options. And then that will give you a better idea of what to study. Annabelle says she's thinking about a media program, but not sure what school. What type of media, Annabelle? Uh, Laura, can you unmute yourself for a minute? Um, Pierce is interested in more contact information with you. Absolutely. Um, I was going to I was going to mention career services when I saw that. Um, so I can write my contact information in the chat and feel free to reach out if you, like Nancy said, if you're unsure of what program you want to study, we can help you with some career exploration uh, before you even get here. So I will write that in the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so Annabelle has said edi editing videos or photos. So we do have uh, a wonderful program here, and they even have some special tracks. Oh, here's an excellent question from Pierce. Will my Access VR person be in touch with you after I apply? Well, we like it if you encourage that, Pierce. We usually like to know who your counselor is, how they might be assisting you, um, what your plan 
of support is that's been approved by Access VR. And sometimes you can imagine the poor Access VR counselor because they deal with a lot of students and they may all be going to all different colleges and each college is different. So the Access VR counselors may reach out to us and say, do you provide tutoring services because this student really needs it? And so I will mention that, I should have stressed that already. We have a wonderful tutoring support system here at OCC called the Learning Center. And as I say, they've already moved in many ways to a virtual format. Uh, so you can have that support, but not all colleges provide tutoring. So I know in college, I still remember it because I still remember the final exam and it wasn't that uh, short a time ago. Statistics, oh, that was my nemesis. I still remember the statistics final exam. We didn't have tutoring where I went to school. It was rough. So take advantage of that service. So Pierce also wants to know if he can apply now. And I'm sure Kathy would be happy to assist with that process. And the yes. answer is yes. Yes, the answer is yes, absolutely. Um, if you go to the main OCC website, which I will put in the chat for you, Pierce, there is a button about halfway down that says apply now, and you can click on that link and it'll walk you right through the process. And if you have any questions with that process, I'll have my information included as well so that I could help you answer any of those um, questions you might have. But yes, absolutely, it is. we are open for applications right now. Anyone think that they're going to live in the residence halls or are you going to be a commuter student to start out? Maybe you haven't decided yet. Pierce is gonna to commute to start. And the bulk of our students do that. Um, we have space for about 800 students to live on campus. Um, but the vast majority of students do not live here at OCC. Again, if you change your mind later, you want to do that your second year, uh, quite a few students do that. Nancy, the one thing that I wanted to add, you had mentioned the Learning Center, and I apologize, with the video you will all see, the Learning Center is actually yes. featured in that video. Um, but with being a part of the OAR office and having a service plan, you are... Um, entitled to more tutoring than a student who doesn't have a service plan. So what a typical student would get, um, you get double that. So it's that's correct. Four, yeah, four sessions per class per week. So that's really great. Typically it's two sessions per class per week, but um, having that service plan, you would just have to present that to the learning center and you would get the um, increased services, which is a bonus. I'm glad you added that. And tutoring in college is quite different than in high school. Um, sometimes I feel in high school, it's sort of viewed as stigmatizing, like, mm -hmm. oh, you must be a really weak student, or why would you need that? It's not viewed that way in a college campus. Uh, many of our strongest students use tutoring. It's a free service. I mean, you can get editing if you have a paper due. You can have study prep for a test you might have coming up. You could just if you were me and you were in statistics and you read the first chapter and you felt totally overwhelmed, somebody could break it down for you and review the vocabulary and um, provide enthusiastic support so you didn't feel so overwhelmed. There's a lot of good reasons for uh, using tutoring support. Yeah, I actually had a lot of students this semester, Nancy, two of them who just needed help with outlines, forming outlines, and they benefited greatly from using the Learning Center. So great services that they offer. Now, Julie is just as a wonderful question. I love music students. Um, she would like to register for a music audition because she applied to our music school. We have a wonderful music school here. I love the faculty. Are you a vocal student or an instrumental student, Julie? I'm doing alto sax in college and got a email about like auditioning that I got to register and do a music theory test and audition. 
Yep, the first step is usually to schedule the audition. So if you got an email, it should have said who you contact uh, to arrange that. Um, but again, if they neglected to provide that, just send us an email. Um, we're friends with the music department and the coach of the music department, uh, type her name right here in the chat box, is a wonderful person named Megan Carrier is the music so there are a lot of supports here. That music um, major now is based in one of our newest and most beautiful buildings on campus. Um, and we had quite a few of our students that started this past fall as a new music student. So it's a really nice community and family. Other questions or doesn't have to be about OCC, can be about, are you excited about it? Is it something you're looking forward to? I hope. I love my college years. I went to SUNY Geneseo, another school in the SUNY system. I think it's a reason that uh, I still work. I loved it so much. I never left. I just decided to become an employee instead of a student. Pierce says he's kind of excited. <laughs> you got to get that enthusiasm level up. <laughs> well, I feel like we're starting to get to know you, which is part of what this process is about. So reach out to us, any of us here that have interact with it you today and we wish you a safe and happy holiday season. Um, if you want to get started with some of those applications, um, I think we'd all be happy to assist you with any issues that come up. Uh, Kathy, we're fortunate she's our liaison with uh, admissions and recruitment here at OCC. So we thank you so much for joining us today. Kathy will be sending you out some of the links. We apologize for the earlier problem with hearing the video, but hopefully it'll just be a reinforcer when you watch it, uh, some of the things what we've discussed today. And thank you all for coming. Happy holidays. Yes, thank, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye for now.